where do you get the flow rate from? How do engineers, how do plumbing engineers come up with the GPM demand required for their sewage pump? How, what do they use? That's kind of a good question. In surveying the people that we talked to, most of them use fixture counts, the old-fashioned fixture counts where we came up with the pressure booster sizing. How much water do you need going into a building? Theory being what goes into the building has to come out. That's kind of the basic theory. That's what most engineers we talk to use. Um, those values assume kind of normal usage. And, and we're going back again to the fact that if you've got a cooling tower or you have a body showers or some special amount of water going in there, the fixture count would be too light, would not be enough flow. So what we're going to have to do is make sure if you've got special cases that you add to your fixture counts any body showers, any cooling towers, any special water usage because what goes into a building has to come out. If you go back to the code again, this is the IPC, International Code Council, throughout the whole country, you'll find this table in there. This is a drainage fixture unit. Make sure you understand the word. This is drainage. This is not a supply side. This is the drainage fixture count that the code says you shall use. And it's kind of works the same way as the fixed account on the supply side. In fact, some of the numbers are very similar. But I caution you to read the fine print on table 709.1. And that fine print is shown to you here. It's basically in the red there. It's for pipe sizing. In other words, that table is for pipe sizing only, not for calculating the sewage pump demand and flow. Let me repeat that. That table we just looked at is for coming up with the pipe size, not for the GPM demand. Per the code, it's exactly what it says. So how do engineers come up with the demand in GPM? I think we just kind of said what goes in the system must come out. So we see most engineers using the old demand fixtures on the supply side, plus the body showers, plus the cooling towers, to get the total demand. Remember, local codes override. That local plumbing guy can make you do it any way they want to. I mentioned body showers. I mentioned cooler tower blowdown. I hope I got the message to you. You've got to look beyond just a fixture count. Most engineers do use this drainage fixture unit with Hunter's curve. That's pretty much how they do it. But I've got a question for you. What does the code say about coming up with demand? And I think this is really interesting. Read it. 712.4.2 at the bottom in red about capacity. What does the code tell you to do? A sewage pump, and I'll read it, read it to you, or sewage ejector shall have the capacity and head for the application requirements, period. Even underline. And so I'm not trying to pick at the code, but it doesn't help you out a whole lot, does it? It says it's got to be big enough to work. So how do you come up with what's big enough to work? That's why I give you on the demand side what we see people doing, and I think you'll understand that as we go through this. So list the fixture count you got, do the demand side, come up with it, go to the Hunter Curve and get your GPM. That's what everybody's doing. Also, while you're there, you do your pipe size. Thank you. Have a great day.